Hi guys, I'm Andy. Welcome back to Backpacking UK, the YouTube channel that's all about hiking, backpacking and wild camping. Well, I've got a fantastic review for you today. These are what I believe are the best trekking pole tents you can buy, and that includes the best value for money too. I've got the Durston X Mid 1 Solid, I've got the 3FUL Gear, Lanchan 2 Four Season, and I've also got the Tarp Tent Stratsfire 1, and the solid version at that. Now, these are the cheaper versions. Now, why have I not included the lighter weight versions? Now, this is Backpacking UK. This is not Backpacking PCT or AT. I truly believe for Backpacking in the UK, I don't think you need a lighter tent than these. These are all approximately one kilo, which is exceptionally light for a backpacking tent. Now, I've used all these three. They are fantastic tents. You might think this is cheating a little bit because this is a two-person tent, the others are one-person tents. However, the Lanshan 1 is substantially lighter than these two, but also substantially smaller as well. The Lanshan 2 is a similar sort of weight, a similar sort of pack size, so I thought I should include it in this review too. Now, why have I omitted the lighter weight fabrics? One, for cost, the DCF Loi Ultra fabrics are very, very expensive. If these were the ultralight versions, they would be approximately about 750 pounds, which, to be honest, they are sort of glorified tarps, they have minimal features, and they don't come with poles as well. So £750 for that sort of tent, I think, is a lot of money, and I think value for money goes out the window. Fantastic if you're doing a 2,000 mile trip, but this is Backpacking UK at the end of the day. So here you have the trekking pole tents fully packed up. You got the X Mid at 30 centimeters by 13 centimeters, the Lanshan 2 at 34 centimeters by 15 centimeters, and the Stratospire at 41 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So the X Mid and the Lanshan are quite tightly packed. This looks absolutely huge, but to be fair to Tarp Tent, it is an oversized pack which means it's really easy to pack away and also if it's wet, it packs away nicely. These are much more difficult to pack away once you've been using them or if they're wet. So why also have I gone for the solid versions? Now, these all have see-through mesh versions with a tiny little bathtub floor, loads of see-through mesh. Now, for the weather we're experiencing with shorter summers, in the UK, I'm not convinced how fit for purpose they are. So these solid versions are perfect for the UK. So how much do these tents cost? Now, obviously there's exchange rate fluctuations as well, but you have to buy the tarp tent and the Durston from the States, which means you'll pay quite a lot of delivery charges, VAT and duty as well. These are gonna set you back about 350 pounds-ish. They've cheapened the Stratosphere 1, mainly for using the Sil Poly instead of Sil Nylon. So these are about £350. Now this Lanshan 2 can be had for as little as under £150 all in. So this tent is substantially cheaper than the other two, but I believe they all represent excellent value for money. So the official weights for these tents, all packed in, but with the bare minimum stakes, are the X Mid at 905 grams, the Lanshan at 1,150 grams, and the Stratospire at 1,031 grams. However, I will say my Stratospire and my X Mid actually weighs slightly more than is suggested by about. 30 or 40 grams, but they're all seriously lightweight backpacking tents. Now, there's a big argument with trekking pole tents whether you should use sil nylon or sil poly. Sil poly stretches less um, than sil nylon when wet. Now, for your fair weather camper, 
to be honest it doesn't really affect you personally i wouldn't choose a trekking pole tent if i knew i was going out in heavy rain that's my own personal choice but still poly definitely stretches less now dcf fabrics have virtually no stretch whatsoever now for me the problem with that is if you've got a no stretch fabric one when it's windy all the force is going straight into those pegs if there's a little bit of give in the fabric it almost adds like a little bit of suspension as well the other thing is zero stretch fabrics are fine if you've got a perfectly flat pitch however even like today when you've got a slight undulation of the ground they can be a nightmare to pitch so it's just one thing worth considering when choosing the right fabric for your trekking pole tent now a disclaimer for today now i've pitched these tents with the accessories that they have come with now to make these really weatherproof you do need to buy additional pegs and additional guys at your own expenses however some of these tents have additional little loops on the fly to really peg these down they all look fantastic at the moment however i guarantee you as soon as i get these doors open they'll be flapping around like anything now a lot of this flapping can be negated by using the additional accessories so if you're thinking about buying one of these tents buy some extra pegs buy some extra guy ropes so these are the 10 pegs for the Durston X mid. They may look like they've come straight from AliExpress, but they're not too bad and certainly better than the old versions. These are the pegs for the free FUL gear land Shan 2. They're way too small to be honest. Good for summer, not good for any other time of year. And these are the nine inch Eastern stakes for the Stratspire. Now, one thing I would say is for the main guiding points of trekking pole tents, you really do want a long stake if it's going to be really wet and windy i'd highly recommend the delta ground anchors take two or four of them with you and your trekking pole tent should stay upright now there are plenty of other really good trekking pole tents out there mainly american versions north american because they do tend to have longer trails much much longer multi-day trips things like z packs six moon designs and um, also in the uk as well i've had a great experience with decathlon mt 900 trek and pole tents as well but i think they're more favorable in better weather conditions hence why they don't feature here so the test the next mid one solid uses a sil poly fabric which is 20D fabric with a hydrostatic head rate of 3,500 millimeters. The inner is a 15D and the bathtub floor is a 20D again with a hydrostatic head rating of 3,500 millimeters. Now you've got additional guy points, one on the long side, halfway up the long side fabric and one on the short side too, but you will need to buy additional tent pegs for that now it's got a little vent at the top of each trekking pole which you can open and close using velcro and although quite small they are quite effective so the three ful gear lanshan 2 uses a sil nylon fabric which is 15d with a hydrostatic head rating of 5,000 millimeters. The inner is 15D and the bathtub floor is 20D, again with a hydrostatic head rating of 5,000 millimeters. Now on the long sides, you've got this going out point which connects the two. You've also got an optional going out point which I've stuck that on myself, which to be honest, you do need that on the short sides you've got a going out point on the sides but it's quite a big tent and to be honest i think it could do with some more going out points you've also got a vent 
on top of each trekking pole. Now these vents are always open and they're quite small and they have some effect but not as much effect of ventilation as the other tents but it's not that necessary because on the long side you've always got a lot of air coming underneath that fly. So on the top tent, Stratospire 1. Now this is the seal nylon version. However, they've cheapened the tent up and the fly is now a seal poly. So the fly is 20D fabric with a hydrostatic head rating of 3000. The inner is just a 10D and the bathtub floor is a 30D, again with a hydrostatic head rating of 3000 millimeters like the x mid it uses an offset inner which is a very clever design however the top tent stratosphere one also uses these special ends these pitch lock ends with tiny little poles and they just help create this really really clever shaped trekking pole tent and as you can see as well it's got an offset zip so you can change the door openings depending on where the weather is coming from now going out points it's got main one at the top you will need to buy additional pegs for that but it's quite a different design on the short side you've got another sort of going out point to put on there but I find this tent quite solid similar to the X mid as well now ventilation again you got two vents at the top of each trekking poles these are quite tiny these are really really small vents um, probably the least effective out of the three tents now you do have additional going out points between the main points so you really really can batten this tent down if you like but you'll have to modify it so the door openings on the tents the x mid uses a tiny tiny little magnet which i absolutely hate i find that it comes undone in the wind and especially if it's wet you just get water from your flappy fly in your tent, which is really annoying. The Lanshan 2 uses a little toggle and the Stratospire 1 uses a toggle with elastic, which is really quite effective. The X-Mid, two doors and two vestibules, and it's got a fairly small but effective little square vestibule. The Lanshan 2, it's got a bigger vestibule, but it's really, really open to the elements. And the Stratospire 1 has got really nice, big vestibule space, especially if you have that extra pegging point as well. It's massive and it's really quite weatherproof too. So all these tents are four season solid versions. The X-Mid has the most see-through mesh it's got quite a lot of see-through mesh on i must say the land shanty just got a little bit of see-through mesh at the top so much less chilly wind entering that tent and the stratospire one is somewhere in between now all these trekking pole tents have a reasonable height of the bathtub floor this is the x mid can be raised and lowered from a strap at the top so the inner can be raised and lowered depending on how you want it this is the lanshan 2 probably the lowest height of the bathtub floor there and then the stratospire it's also got quite a high bathtub floor but on all these tents that can be raised and lowered simply by increasing the height of your trekking poles but you may distort the shape of the tent slightly so one thing i will say 
we've got Storm Kathleen going on at the moment. So it's very, very windy today with gusts of 40 to 50 kilometers an hour. Now, as you can see with all these trekking pole tents, they're actually quite good in the wind when the doors are fully zippered. However, as soon as you open the doors on a trekking pole tent, they do tend to flap around quite a lot unless you go round and adjust the fly to compensate for the door opening. Now one note I do want to pick up on because it's quite a big deal for me because I like quite a tight and taut inner is the inner connects to the trekking pole on the X mid and the Land Shan 2 but doesn't on the Stratospire 1, which I think is a massive omission. Now this is the J-Zip version of the Land Shan 2. There's also a T-Zip version, which to be honest, that wasn't available when I bought this. I would definitely prefer the T-Zip. Uh, just like the Hillebergs, it's a really, really good design. So inside the Durston X Mid 1 solid, I've got an internal length of up to 230 centimeters and that's because it's slightly offset so in reality the rectangle inside is much less than that and um, the height I've got these trekking poles set up today at 115 centimeters the optimum is somewhere between 115 and 120 centimeters like I've said you can adjust the inner height this is at its highest point right now um, inside you've got 81 centimetres width which is perfect for extra wide sleeping pads. Now I'm really quite slouched at the moment if I'm more upright and on a pad there is a little bit of rubbing on my head. It's quite a peaky design so the head has really got to be in line with this offset inner so you don't rub your head but for a really lightweight one person trekking pole tent there's a reasonable amount of space in here it's really really not too bad limited features there's no doubt about that but it's not a bad place to be you've got a couple of pockets and a couple of lantern hooks so inside the Durston X Mid 1 solid you've got little pocket and a little strap for a lantern above each trekking pole. So here I am inside the 3FUL gear Land Shan 2. Now this is obviously a two person tent so it's cheating a little bit. It's absolutely massive inside. You've got a 220 centimetre length which is an official 220 centimetres. You've got 110 centimetres width and today I've got these trekking poles set up about 125 centimetres. So it is cheating, it's a two person tent but it's absolutely massive inside, there's no doubt about that. Now again with these trekking pole tents not a lot of features, you've just got like one pocket at one end and you've got a couple of hooks for lanterns. So here's a look inside the 3 fuel well gear Land Shan 2. Now as you can see that's your pocket and then you've just got your lantern hooks at the top there. So here I am inside the top tent Stratsfire 1. So you've got a length of 218 centimetres, you've got 81 centimetre width and today I've got these trekking poles set up at 120 centimeters. Now for me, I absolutely love the space this provides. I've got bags of room inside this tent. For one person, this is definitely ample. There feels like there's loads of space inside this tent, loads of space inside this vestibule. You do not need a two person tent if you've got a Stratospire 1. There's no doubt about that. Now you've got two hooks above each trekking pole and you've got a pocket by each 
door inside as well. So here's a quick look inside the tarp tent struts fire one. So you've got that little pocket on either door and you've got the little hooks above each trekking pole too. So as you can see, I'm really starting to get some of those gusty gale winds now. And this shows the importance of having those extra guy lines, those extra pegs. If you truly want to make these bad weather tents, you have to have the additional accessory. Right, so summary time. What's my final summary of these trekking pole tents? Now, as trekking pole tents go, I think these three are excellent, and I also think they're excellent value for money. Even though in the UK we pay a premium for the tarp tent and the Durston, I still think they are excellent value for money. Now, pitching wise, people can make a real, real mess of pitching these tents. All I'd say to those people is practice, practice, practice. If you nail the pitching, all three of these tents go up extremely quickly. The x mids definitely the easiest to pitch without a shadow of a doubt, but these two are also easy to pitch too. Just need a little bit of practice. Now, all three of these tents are prize winners. They've all won awards, all differently. The tarp tent with the ultra fabrics just won one this year already. Everyone knows the X Mids and Multi Award winner as well. And the Land Shan 2 keeps picking up like best value for money trekking pole tent as well. So they're all superb. Which one should you buy? Now, this is totally, totally up to you, but I'll give you my opinion. Now, out of these three tents, by far the best value for money tent has got to be the Land Shan 2. It's also been massively tried and tested. It's hugely popular. It's a massive tent for the tiny pack size and the amount of weight that it costs too. It's just superb value for money. The x has got a very clever design as does <clears throat> the tarp tent Stratosphere as well. <clears throat> now, this is where it comes down to personal preferences. Now, my favorite tent is the tarp tent. I absolutely love that bigger vestibule. The size inside that tent is absolutely perfect for me. Now, with a bit of modification, and if you use all the little tabs at the bottom of the fly, you truly can make that bad weather tent. There's no doubt about that. The x mid sold as a storm-worthy tent. As you can see from today, it's far from it without the modifications. There's no doubt about that. I haven't actually seen it in any storms yet, but you know, it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up in bad weather as time goes on. Now for weatherproofness, by far, even though it's got hydrostatic head rate in 5,000 millimeters, the Land Shan 2 is definitely, definitely the worst in the wind, but it's a big, big tent. So again, it's not really fair to compare on that, but for nice weather, I would say the Land Shan 2 is definitely, definitely on a par with, with the others. There's no two ways about that. If you're a fair weather camper, this will be absolutely perfect for you. But these are cracking tents, there's no doubt about that. I'm not a massive trekking pole tent fan. However, I think these three tents are a great way to really lighten the load. If you've got a true multi-day backpacking trip planned, these are three fantastic tents. And for the UK, you don't need DCF fabrics. You don't need these special ultra or live fabrics. These fabrics are absolutely plenty for UK multi-day backpacking. You know, at the end of the day, you can do the Cumbria way in four days. You can do the West Highland way in five days. You know, you don't need a tent that weighs 500 grams. These are all approximately a kilo with small pack sizes. This is ample for the UK. I truly, truly believe that. 
But anyway, hope you like this review. Please check out my videos. Hope to see you camping soon. Cheers.